Dorbid Den and good morning from Split Croatia. I'm gonna pretend I just got off this yacht, but I'm gonna show you Dionysus Palace. So you might now know Split from Game of Thrones or Yacht Week, uh, but actually there's a lot of history here that you might like. This is actually the fortress walls, the old palace. So if you just walk on the promenade, you would think it's just a little touristy beach city like anywhere else. But actually, just a minute that way behind these old walls, there's so much history. This was actually founded by the Greek thousands of years ago and was taken over by the Romans, the Byzantines, the you know, Turkish uh, Ottoman Empire, the, uh, the, the Italians from, from Venice, uh, and it was actually part of the former Yugoslavia until just 1991. I think most of you watching this were born uh, and alive since then. But let's take a look inside. It's almost a little bit hard to tell unless you really look up, but behind all these touristy restaurants is actually an old palace and the entrance is just right here you would never find it because this is the only entrance if you look to left or right it's all restaurants or cafes but just here is a semi-secret entrance that brings you into the basements and now kind of look is basically a souvenir shop and also a uh, museum as you can kind of see right here Uh, I'm not going to go in today, but if you want, there is a museum where you can see the rest of it. But I'm going to tell you a little secret about uh, what used to be here in these souvenir shops. Look how old and beautiful this is. Uh, now, it really is just a walkway. But before, for a thousand years, not only uh, was this where one of the scenes from Game of Thrones was filmed, uh, this was a part of the Working Palace for a long time. But then, somehow, they decided, let's just use it to fill up with trash. Because they needed a place to throw all the garbage, and they decided just filling up this entire basement with it. And if you see those little holes here in the wall, that was sewage. So not only did you have trash, you had uh, all the cooking stuff right down here, but also, of the actual toilet waste as well so where i'm standing here just uh less than 100 years ago was completely full of literal human crap and now it's filled with uh tourist crap but it's still relatively quiet now here is a authentic splitian a korat in the wild how are you <laughs> uh, what are you making uh Earrings from corals. So I, you actually make this stuff by yourself? That's, Some of it, yes. Oh, I, thought, I assumed it was all made in China. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Elizabeth, yeah. really nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck. <laughs> and uh, what advice would you give some tourists if they come to Split? Uh, to uh, visit or... Yeah. Uh, well, nature, nature. Lots of nature in Croatia. Beautiful. <laughs> okay. Well, Huala. Huala. <laughs> I'll see you. Bye. So just outside of these souvenir shops, we actually have these stairs that some of you Game of Thrones fans may recognize. This right here was where the dragons were. So the first appearance is where the dragons were chained, but I'm pretty sure all these dragon scenes were filmed in the basement. If not exactly in this location, uh, they were all in a very similar location. So. Uh, definitely some of the dragon scenes were filmed here in this exact spot we're in. Harold was in the garage. There's a way here. Yeah. So we have uh, some of these old Roman soldiers here. And here, we already have the palace. So it's definitely a very touristy place now. You can see people are dressed up. The Roman soldiers taking uh, photos, 
but there's actually a ton of history here and it's not just a tourist attraction it is literally an open air museum this right here is actually a newly built uh, part of a church so this open air museum is free and actually at night you have live music that's why people sit around here uh, but it really is absolutely beautiful and there's history everywhere the sphinx right here that people are just sitting right right under most people don't realize that this sphinx is 3,500 years old and it actually comes from northern africa where Jesus just brought this over and it's sitting right out of here just untouched how crazy is it that it's just this much history is just sitting right here all right, so we came from the basements down here, but actually up here, I want to show you guys a scene you might recognize. So we often forget there's actually two levels of this palace. So downstairs for hundreds, or maybe a thousand years, it was used as a trash heap, while everything was up here. This exact spot where I'm standing right here, right now, this is where the emperor used to stand and address his audience. I am the great Diolation, addressing my whole audience here. Everybody listen to what I have to say. One fun fact is every single emperor before him died within a year. They all got poisoned or killed. Uh, so he survived because he pretended he was a part of the gods. And he had all these rules. Like he was the only one allowed to wear uh, purple. Uh, this royal color which no, no one's ever seen before. He would speak in this ancient Latin. Uh, he would always be addressed up here. So people thought, wow, maybe he is one of the gods. And this amphitheater, as soon as I walk in, you hear my voice change. This made his voice sound, you know, 10 times or 100 times louder. So people really thought, he really must be the emperor. And this used to even have this uh, stained glass on top. Now it's open air, but can you imagine the lights coming through? But what I, one thing I really like doing is talking to locals, and I found out from some of them that when they were young, just like 20, 30 years ago, when it was you know, still like 30 years ago when it was still Yugoslavia, they used to come here to play soccer, football, and they would use that as a goal. This is before the tour started coming. So even though literally right behind me that's that super touristy area i'm like i walked like a less than a minute and it's dead quiet and people actually live in these buildings and it's crazy because half of them are kind of a they're somewhat newly built attached to the old palace walls so if you can see uh this is the old stone and this is a little bit new kind of mortar and they kind of just attached everything to each other so you have the old and the new kind of built just right next to each other. It would be really loud to live here though, but it was, it was as impossible. Oh, this, you're living here? Yeah. Wow, how crazy is that? Come to my house. Yeah, you can give me a tour? <laughs> and this is your laundry hanging up here? Yes. So this is a, a local split oh, in <laughs> from the ancient. Yes. It's 300 years old. Oh my God. Wow. It's uh, 300 years old. It's actually, how cool is this? You have these old walls and this old sink. We have sink. walls, we have piano. Uh -huh. We have a 300 year old block. Ooh, <laughs> that's fancy. And it's, I'm yeah. assuming, is it Airbnb, I'm assuming? Uh, okay. Yeah. Wanna see our sleeping room? Oh, oh inviting me already. <laughs> I don't know what kind <laughs> of video this is turning into. <laughs> is really nice. And do you have a view? Uh, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. That's nice. Wow. Wow. How much do you pay here? Uh, what? We pay on this Sunday 200. Like, so how much is it per night? I have no idea. <laughs> I haven't booked it. Yeah. Ray and I booked it. Too rich. So, like, five, <laughs> five nights, 300. That's pretty cheap. Except for yeah. two bucks a night. But it's yeah. May, so it's still it's low still season. It's still low season, yeah. But okay. it's already hot. Well, yeah, thank you for it. showing me your beautiful ancient home. 
I can give you the contact. <laughs> So I just noticed that this is like a natural wine cooling rack, but their Airbnb didn't come with any wine. Nice. Such a shame. Thank you very much for the tour. Bye, you're welcome. <laughs> Bye. So I would like to say that that was great directing on my part, but actually it was pure luck that she happened to be there. And she was part of the Nomad Cruise if you saw the previous videos. But yeah, it just shows that people are actually living here. And now a lot of people are renting out on Airbnb, so you too can live within these palace walls. Palace wall, new apartment. And even more new apartments. Speaking of which, let's take a look outside this window here. And this is the promenade right here, where we started. So if you do come to Split, I would definitely recommend you take one of those free walking tours. I did mine with Spectacular Split, and they were really good. That's where I learned a lot of this history, including what's behind me. So here is the mausoleum. It's like a resting ground for the emperor. And he was the last uh, Roman emperor that was not religious. So when the Christians or the Catholics came, uh, they decided, no, let's not destroy it. Let's do something worse. And they built this, they turned into a church basically. And they're still building here today. The old and the new. Lots of old though. Look at this. So one reason why a lot of the Christians don't like the uh, Venetians or the Romans or the Italians, I guess, is they used to come here and on the way back to Venice, they would steal or destroy parts of their wall to bring back their stones to build uh, in Venice. So it's a little bit of animosity. But since 1991, that's gone. That was, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago now. The new animosity for the last 30 years has been with Serbia. Uh, Serbia is a pretty much landlocked country. It's a lot poorer. Uh, they're the neighbors. They used to all be part of Yugoslavia together uh, but they had a big war when they finished and now in 2022 Serbia is super pro-Russian and they are for the you know just basically supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine several thousand people gathered on this evening in April in central Belgrade to sing the Russian national anthem they came to show their support for Russia and its president, Vladimir Putin. We're on the right side, on Russia's side. They chant, Serbs and Russians, brothers forever. And we don't need the EU. We support the Russians because they are our brothers. So the Croatians have been very nice. They've been very good about, you know, being supportive of Ukrainians uh, and the war, you know, being against the war because they went through this. You know, they went through like basically the Yugoslavian war in their generation. A lot of people still remember it and they don't want to see it again. Yet in Serbia, not everybody, but the government and a lot of Serbs, uh, including some of the trolls on my YouTube channel, on my Instagram, they are super pro-Putin, pro-Russia, for whatever silly reason. I obviously can't lift these because these are probably a thousand pounds each, but these are part of the old walls and you can even see faces and descriptions of these still. Look at this. In some ways, the old kind of Roman uh, culture or architecture is even more preserved here than in Rome itself, which I've been to as well. Literally, it's everywhere. At least in the old town. But let's get out of this uh, old palace and let's check out some of the streets, some of the cafes and shops, and tell you a little bit more about 
what I like about Split in 2022 as a digital nomad or as a traveler and why I would absolutely recommend coming here. It's such a easy place to get lost, but it is a very safe city. Same country in general. So I think she's talking about the old stones and also these old uh, tile works that was on the ground. So this is all original. So here leaving the main kind of tourist area, literally if you go down any street, it becomes a bit windy and you start finding little bars and cafes. So it's funny, you'll see uh, some of these Game of Thrones souvenir shops and even a museum here. But honestly, there wasn't that much filmed in Split. If you want to see the real Game of Thrones locations, go to Dubrovnik, uh, which is a few hours down the coast. And if you want to eat or drink something, just go a little bit away from that direct tourist area and just walk down one of these alleys. And you're gonna find uh, kind of smaller Queen Tour cafes. The more authentic where locals will sometimes go as well. Notice how much quieter it is just a few blocks away and how much smaller these restaurants are. They still get popular, but they're just a little bit, a little bit more quaint. And even though the old town is actually pretty small, it's so super easy to get lost around here because everything is kind of like a little maze, winds back and forth. And I've walked to this coffee shop every morning the past week and still I always have to pull out my Google Maps to find it because everything is just uh, yeah, everything is a little maze here's uh, one of the fancier restaurants that has like a hundred dollars seven course tasting menu but it is beautiful inside as you can see oh yeah stimmt. But just in front of me around the corner is my favorite coffee shop that I found in Split. It's called D16 Coffee. And what I like about them is they have two separate spaces. And one side is good for co-working. It's a little bit hard to find because it's down one of these random little alleyways. And it seems like it would be dark. But actually they have a window facing from the, uh, from the back. So this is a, a coffee side, which I really like. But my favorite part is this side, the co-working side. There are lots of tables. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. Are you doing a little co-working? <laughs> oh, hey guys. So while I'm here in Croatia, I needed to catch up on my Game of Thrones because I haven't watched it in a few years. And I was trying to figure out where all these cool scenes are from. Mm. Oh my god! I was surfing and searching, rewatching all my favorite episodes, and then I realized it's all on HBO Max. But until just a few months ago, you couldn't even watch HBO Max in Croatia, where Game of Thrones was freaking filmed. How insane is that? That means you could go to the place to the basement where the dragons were, where, you know, Khaleesi was, was physically standing, but you couldn't even watch Game of Thrones on HBO. And this is all because of licensing deals. And not only with HBO, even today, even if you have a membership, even if you pay for Disney+, Plus, you just can't log in. I try logging in right now. Guess what I, it said? I got a blank error. It says unavailable. So you can be paying for these services and you just can't watch it. And with my Netflix, I get to watch now Croatian Netflix, which has a few good things, but honestly, I wanna watch my favorite shows from the US or from Ukraine. So all I do is I VPN in. And that's why I'm so happy to have Surfshark VPN. Not only does it keep me safe and secure from traveling in the Balkans or other kind of random countries, 
but also I can use it to watch my favorite shows and do my research for this channel because you know watching Game of Thrones for 20 hours to find <laughs> the uh, dragon scenes is considered research. Uh, so if you don't have a VPN yet, this is a great deal right now with Surfshark. You can get 83% off and three extra months for free. All you have to do is use my link below. And just for June 2022, they're making an even better deal. If you sign up for two years in advance, guess what? You also get a free antivirus, which means if you're using not maybe one of these, but any kind of Windows laptop, you definitely need a antivirus and, and maybe for Macs too. So use my link in the description below. And thank you to Surfshark VPN for keeping us safe and keeping us uh, well informed on our days off when we're doing research and traveling. All right, so that's where I've been spending kind of my days. Split is one of those kind of weird cities where in the old town, there's enough to do where you can stay just like one or two days, or you can stay a whole week like I've been. Uh, it's not super cheap, but it's not that expensive either, especially compared to like Italy or France or something. So beautiful place. I would definitely recommend coming in May or like September. Don't come in the super peak tour season because it would be really annoying uh, to be with that many people who pay those high prices. And another secret is you can drink the tap water and actually use this fountain to fill up as well. So if you ever wanted to fill by lion, you can. So the old city itself, the reason why you don't see any cars, it's completely blocked off. And here we are exiting. Now we're going outside the old city where cars are loud again, so it looks very different. Fun fact is most tourists never leave the ocean promenade or the old city, so they've never even seen this part of Split. There is a lot of life here. But it's definitely worth coming to. You can rent these bicycles by the hour. Here's also their theater as well. It is a really beautiful theater as well. Some of the, uh, the shows and uh, Filmani's that they're, they're playing here. Let's see if we can just quickly poke our, our head in. Dare to say that a lot of all the touristy kind of beautiful beach cities I've been to, Split may have been my one of my favorites, at least top three or five. But yeah, it has a little bit of everything. It has a lot of like this old history, culture, beauty, but also I don't know, it has like a good soul to it. I think it's there's this young, young new country soul. So it's time for me to have a little lunch. And instead of going to a expensive touristy restaurant, uh, the two things that locals will actually eat here, one is gonna be these sugary sandwich things, like a sausage sandwich, which I've had a few times, they're really good. They do have them all over the Balkans though. Uh, and the second is this little cafe, cafeteria style restaurant called Restaurant Index. So this place has indoor and outdoor seating. But this, as you'll see, is a very local place where a lot of students go. It kind of reminds me of a Croatian Puzata Hada. You see in here, lots of students and workers all eat here. There's not really a menu. You kind of just uh, show the grandmother and mama what you want. Oh, 
Koala. So now we'll move our tray and deploy it as best as Alright, so this was $24 Koala, which is about $3.30. So this is definitely the cheapest meal I've had in Croatia so far. Um, usually I'm spending about 15 or 20 dollars every time I go out with friends. But food like this does exist and it's literally on the border of the old city. And it's very just common just to randomly sit with people. It's kind of a cafeteria style. It reminds me of school. Alright, so when we're done eating, we're expected to bust our own trays. So honestly, it's not like the tastiest food in Croatia, but it's cheap, it's easy, so a lot of people eat here. It's definitely more of a student place to, to eat than a, a tourist spot. So here there's some uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, but definitely more expensive than in the supermarket. And just next door, you can see some of the housing prices. And out of curiosity, I was looking at some of the apartment prices, how much it costs to, to buy a place here. And it's expensive, uh, anywhere between you know, 200 uh, to 500,000 euros just to buy a place kind of in the center of the split. Two quick question. Uh, how much is like the average uh, apartment in the center of the old town? How much? Like per square meter is it? Uh, for apartments in the old town in Split. Uh, please, over here. Uh, sorry, uh, in Split, in split? Uh, how much does it cost to buy an apartment? Apartment? Yeah. In the center? Split. In the center, yeah. Uh, 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 it's a little uh -huh. apartment. Uh -huh. uh, 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 four uh -huh. and five. Uh, 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 kuna. No, no, uh, euro. Euro, 400,000. Wow. And, and, and more. And more. Uh, okay, koala. It's expensive, yeah? Uh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but it's crazy because the local salary is not so high. What? The local salary is, the salary is not so high. Uh, yes. But, yes. Uh, uh, because the split is, uh, is a pen peninsula. Mm. And no more uh, space for, for, uh, to build. Uh, Okay, I understand. Okay, koala. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah, it's crazy. He was saying it's four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars to buy a, a small apartment in the center of Split. Not even the old town, but it's like the center, which is insane because the local salary is about a thousand dollars a month. So that means you'd have to work four hundred months. What was that, 50 years? It's a fireplace? Assuming it doesn't go up while you're saving. So here is this little place that sells these uh, burger things that are really popular. Uh, they're decently cheap, they're like five dollars a piece, but a lot of locals eat here. So this is the apartment. So 80 bucks a night total, including taxes. But it has a nice, decent kitchen. Uh, and small living room. Two identical bedrooms. This one is mine. One bathroom, kind of standard bathroom with a uh, washing machine. But the best part will definitely be our private rooftop terrace. Let me put on my Abby Bass Tabachki. And let me show you guys. So right up these little stairs here, you'll see we have an entire balcony up here or actual terrace where we can hang out. Check out this view, guys. 
absolutely beautiful. This is definitely what sold us on this place. I made it worth every penny. So overall split, it's a very nice city. Uh, much more beautiful than the Zadar. Much bigger city than like Primostein or Sabernek. But those places are very quaint as well. But here I can spend a week. Good coffee shops, good place to hang out. And even though this Airbnb is right in the old town, it's actually relatively quiet at night, except for the first night when one of the neighbors, uh, actually just out here, decided to have a little party on their, on their balcony. But I'm literally right in the old town. Be careful though, if you're a little bit drunk at night, <laughs> after a couple of glasses of wine to get back down. But overall, good spot. The beach is also just a 10 minute drive away, so it's about a four dollar Uber, very easy. Alright, this is Kajuni Beach. Ka Kajuni? How do you say it? Huh? How do you say the beach? Kajuni? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Kajuni. 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 Yeah. Hola. <laughs> Good beach? Yeah. Is it the best in Spit? Other people say, yeah. Yeah? You like? Uh, I like uh, inside. Ah, okay, next time. Okay, yeah. koala. All right, so about a $4 Uber ride from the old town. We have Koala Beach. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> she just told you. But uh, yeah, it's a little beach club here. And also a um, place to swim, hopefully. Looks like a super cool place. So nice little kind of beach club vibe and a little somewhat sandy, small, pebbly, rocky beach. Let's uh, see how it is. Should be nice to go for a little swim here. All right, guys, I just went for a swim and I must say this is a really cool beach. I really like it. Uh, people normally in Split go to one that's a bit closer because you can walk there, but that one is so shallow that you can't swim. This one is about 10 minute drive, but it's a $4 Uber, so it's pretty cheap. And it goes all the way around and you can swim pretty deep. So it's really nice, really refreshing. Not that many people out yet because the water is a little bit chilly still, but it's refreshing. It's actually like a really nice feeling. Even though some people like the idea of warm uh, seawater, it's actually not very healthy because it harbors a lot of bacteria. So in like Bali, people get a lot of like ear infections and things like that. So I actually don't like swimming in like bath water type uh, oceans or seas. So this is perfect. It's probably around 20, low 20s. Uh, so it's like the cold when you first get in, but it's very refreshing. So you kind of just calm down, breathe, do a little swim then you'll realize this is actually really nice, especially when it's sunny out. You have that kind of hot and cold. So I prefer it. It's healthier. And in May, where the water's not too warm yet, uh, I think it's the perfect time to be here. And there's not that many people yet, because imagine this place being completely packed in June and July. And split would suck. I would hate it there, to be honest. If it was, if it was more packed than this, it'd be, I would hate it. This is like the perfect amount of people. You have just enough people where it's lively and fun. There's families out, there's people kind of hanging out, but it's not too busy. Hi. Hello. Are you enjoying the water? <laughs> All right, now we're back. Now we're on the way back to the old town. Must come every 15 minutes, and it's in Lemon Krona, which is about $1.50. Yeah, I bet it's nice being a family. Yeah. 
Okay, now we are back to Split. Back to the old town. Alright, back to the old town. And we have this nice family. I think they're leaving as well. It's always so nice to see uh, a little Ukrainian family doing okay. You know, it seems like a dream, right? Like they're, you know, by the beach and split, but I'm sure they're also, they'd rather be home. She started talking to me on the on the bus because she saw I was wearing my uh, Ukraine shirt. And she's telling me that her husband and her son are still in Ukraine, uh, so they can't leave. Um, so just her and her youngest that is here in Croatia, split, so. You know, one hand, they're having a beautiful beach holiday. But the other hand, they know that their, you know, her husband and her eldest son is stuck in Ukraine. Uh, maybe even fighting the war. Who knows? So it is. Uh, it's always hard when you see it, right? Like the kid is obviously having fun, but I'm sure he misses his his brother and his dad. But for the mom, uh, yeah, it's hard. So just a reminder that we have to continue supporting Ukraine and Ukrainians. And even though it looks like sometimes, you know, they kind of, you know, life goes on for them, um, they they suffer, like, silently inside. Like, they're very strong people, so they, you know, they're not going to stay at home and just cry all day, right? You can't expect someone to do that. You have to go out and you still have to enjoy life and do things. But this is kind of a reminder of why we're, we're helping so much, why I'm continuing to fundraise. Uh, for Ukraine Ukrainians and by marking all these videos as a fundraiser so if you can please donate uh, you'll see it on the right hand side if you're from the US or Canada or Australia or any of these countries that support YouTube donations all the money goes directly to Rezam for Ukraine who is uh, based in Lviv they have an office there and that money can go directly to them without any fees and without going through me first uh, if you can't donate through them you can donate through my GoFundMe uh, in the description below and I can send the money to different charities on the ground in Ukraine. So thanks so much guys. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope uh, you do come to Split one day as a tourist and not as a uh, refugee like uh, some people uh, have been have been doing. Um, I will definitely 100% recommend do not come here in the high season which is June, July, maybe August. Come in May, come in September. You'll have such a better time. It won't be as hot. It won't be as crowded. It'll be way cheaper and it's still just as nice. Uh, it will suck in <laughs> those tours high seasons. Right now, it's nice. Now it's almost perfect. So come enjoy Split, guys. Enjoy Croatia. Okay, which one do you want? Cookie, Kinder. Hello, how are you? Oh, good, good. Um, which one? Kakoi? Chocolate. Chocolate? Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And for me, uh, are, are we? Yeah, no, no, no thank you. Can you realize that? Yes, thank you. No, no, divide, divide. No, 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 thank you. Okay. Uh, and one uh, pistachio, please. Also, we come. Koala. E? No, also cone, yeah. Okay. Who <laughs> blasted? Yeah, yeah. No, don't speak. You don't speak? Oh, chut chut, yes. Chut chut, chut chut. Saudism. Oh, no. Oh, sorry. Uh, can I pay by card, please? Or oh, actually, no, no, by cash, by cash. Sorry. No, 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 it's better card. Okay, better card then. Change. Uh, so I ended up chasing him down on the boardwalk as we were walking away and I was like, you know what? This poor kid doesn't have an ice cream, so that got him on. And uh, I don't know if he was always not speaking or it was from the war that he's a bit traumatized, but his mom was saying that he doesn't speak very much. So yeah, it's a bit sad, um, but you know, hopefully the ice cream uh, at least cheered him up. Well, God has mine off of things for, for a minute or a bit, you know? So it's really hard because you'll often see Ukrainians uh, just kind of living a normal life, or at least trying to live a normal life, whether it's in Lviv and it looks like things are 
going as normal or in Kiev. Uh, or maybe they are in your city somewhere. You know, maybe you might see them in Croatia at the beach. And the thing is, if they don't move on and live life, it's just daily torture of, you know, scrolling through Telegram or Instagram, seeing, you know, what's what Crazy Putin's up to. Um, but I guarantee you, I've spoken to enough of them where I know they're all hurting inside. So... Let's uh, be, you know, mindful of that. Let's continue to help uh, however we can.